What's up guys? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my basement. In this video, I'm going to be uh I'm starting to work on uh the suspension for the new chassis that I'm building and I'm going to be making or I've already made a prototype for the front spindles that I'm going to be using on this suspension. The suspension I'm making this go around is going to be stronger than the suspension that I have on my bug now. The suspension on I, the suspension that I have on my bug now is actually very very good. However, it's really designed around 31 inch tires, and I want something that's I'm going to say designed for 33 to 35 inch tires. So it needs to be stronger than the suspension that I have now. On top of that, I want to try and design it using um, let's say more over-the-counter parts so that it's um, a little bit less expensive. So on that note, let me show you the parts that I've decided to use for the front A-arm suspension. So originally what I was doing is I was pricing out um, for my new chassis, I want it to be stronger, obviously. So I was looking at um, two-inch hollow stub axles and the uh, the brake kits available for those and wheels that I would use and, and all sorts of stuff. And I was pricing that out and it's good stuff and it would have been nice and strong and there's some really good spindles available for all that stuff. However, I wanted to be able to see if I could do it for a little bit less and possibly do it with over-the-counter parts and still have a really strong system. I'm going to be using front-end components off of a Toyota 4Runner um, which is also kind of the same as a Toyota Tacoma and probably other applications as well. But for starters, what the Toyota 4Runner has is they have these hub assemblies and it's a six on five and a half bolt circle. Uh, and this is only $90, which I don't think is too bad. And it has a four bolt um, mounting surface, which actually, when you see my prototype, Having it four bolts means that I can run a, a center beam through here, um, which really allows me a lot of flexibility with my spindle design. In addition to that, a lot of these hub assemblies require your stub axle to be put in here and torqued down, otherwise they'll actually fall apart. But the Toyota 4Runner you can get in two-wheel drive, and this hub assembly is designed for the two-wheel drive, so it's not designed to have a stub axle go through here. Instead, if you look, the axle itself is threaded and they've got this nut on the back, which is doing the same job that a stub axle would do to pull it all together. And then there's a, uh, a tab that they hammer over on there. With that, I bought a, uh, a rotor for a Toyota 4Runner and it's 12 and a half inches in diameter, which is a really good diameter, which should give me some really good braking capabilities. Now this is only $26, so that's that's really cheap. This originally was a vented rotor, so it had a second rotor back here and it had the veins, you know, running around there. I in this application don't want the vented rotor, so I cut that off. I have not got this machined yet, but I'm going to get this machined so that it's a nice smooth machined surface just like this one is. The way that I'm designing this if you want to run the vented rotor, if you think that for your application you need that, with my design you can do that. I'm, le I'm allowing flexibility in the caliper mounting location so that you can mount whatever caliper you want. But in my application, I don't want the extra weight of the dual vented rotor. So I chopped this off and I'm gonna machine it so that it's a single rotor, which is what I have on there now. Now what I was looking for, what I was looking at was the 4Runner and the Tacoma and what I was specifically looking at was a 16 inch diameter wheel so that I could fit in that 12 and a half diameter rotor. I couldn't do that with a 15 inch wheel. So I bought these off of Craigslist. I paid $450 for these. From everything that I saw in the Craigslist around here, there's a lot for sale. They seem to go from four to $600. Like I said, I got these for 450. These are practically brand new. They had barely any brake dust on them when I got them. But I got all four of them. I like the way that they look. Uh, some people are going to notice that it's off of a Toyota Tacoma. That doesn't bother me. If that did bother you, you could buy aftermarket wheels, um, but those would be significantly more money. Also, if you're really trying to do this on a budget, 
There's also steel wheels that people are taking off of the Tacomas, um, and those are sold on Craigslist for basically fifty to seventy-five dollars for all four. So that's a very economical way to do it. I'll be honest with you, I I guess I'm a little bit of a princess, and I wanted to get some cool aluminum wheels, so I paid a little bit extra and got these. Now another thing that these have that I really like is these wheels have their offset um, pushed out towards the front. So if you look on the inside of the wheel, there's a ton of space in here because they push this really far out. When they take the uh, mounting surface and push it to the outside, it makes it so that your hub assembly gets buried in the wheel pretty far and it makes it so that essentially on this wheel the center of the wheel is practically going right through the bearing assembly. Now the manufacturer does this on purpose because they want they want the bearing assembly to be as strong as possible. When you put the center of the bearing assembly essentially in the center of the wheel that means that as that um, wheel is carrying its weight that weight is being transferred right through the center of the hub assembly which makes it extremely strong. Obviously if you had an offset wheel and the center was more over here and that hub assembly was kind of cantilevered trying to carry the weight of that vehicle that puts significantly more stress on this hub assembly. So now let's assemble this. You take my wheel, flip it over. So I gotta take my rotor and the caliper Set it down in there. Take my hub assembly. Set it down in there. And then take my prototype. I put my caliper in backwards. That's embarrassing. All right, so here is the way that this is going to mount up. You can see up at the top here, this has got about uh, 3 8 of an inch of clearance from the top of the wheel. This is the um, steering connection. The, uh, the geometry for this I copied off of the spindles that are on the uh, my Baja Bug right now because I didn't want to have to calculate any of the Ackerman or anything like that. So I literally just copied all of these dimensions from the spindle that's on there now because I've had really good luck with that spindle. Um, and it is angled eight degrees up to help with the angle of your steering arm coming down with your suspension. And what I did over here is this is going to be a quarter inch plate that the hub bolts to and that I made the caliper mounting piece separate. It's actually a separate piece and that's because they're not at the same elevation. So what I'm going to do when I build this is I'll actually make this piece and then this caliper piece will be separate and I'll mock everything up, I'll bolt the, I'll bolt this piece on, I'll clamp down the caliper so everything's where it needs to be, and then I'll weld this along there, I'll weld it on the back side, and then I'll add a couple pieces on here just to give it a little bit more structure. But doing it that way, it will allow you to run a uh, vented rotor if you need to, because the, venter ro the vented rotor will stick up a lot higher and you'll have a completely different caliper, so you'll need to trim this piece a little bit to go inside the vented rotor and then um, you would have to custom make this bracket a little bit to weld onto here. Now that's all good and dandy and I'm pretty happy with that but let me bring you over to a drawing that I made so I can kind of show you where I came up with the angles and everything for this spindle. So if you come over here, what, what you're looking at right here, this is an actual drawing that I made. This is true to life. I printed it out one to one. <clears throat> this is a side profile of like this. The blue right here is my wheel. That's the T Toyota Tacoma wheel. It's 16 inches in diameter. This pink line here is center line that runs through the wheel. You can see that it's got a little bit of a um, an offset towards the outside. This right here is the brake rotor. This part right here is the bearing assembly. And this green part here is my spindle. This is where my piece goes. Bolts up right there. So when I wanted to design the side profile of this, um, I needed to draw this out so that I knew what I had to work with. 
And then in addition to that, I needed to know my uh, my inclination which, or the angle that you're inclined. If you notice, spindle assemblies, the, the lower and the upper ball joint or the pivot point, they're not straight up and down. If they did, you wouldn't have any angle of inclination, which means you wouldn't have any um, return to center on your steering. So you need some um, angle of inclination in there. Typically on a spindle, you'll see eight to 12 degrees of a inclination. When I laid mine out, I came up with 10 degrees. Uh, what I did is it's what typically what you want to do is you want to be have your spindle designed so that if you run a line through your upper and your lower pivot points and come down to where your tire touches the ground, since I'm designing this for 33 to 35 inch tires, I took my center line here and I came down to where a 34 inch tire would touch the ground. That's right there. I did 34 because that puts me in the middle of a 33 and a 35. Now, typically you want your inclination to touch right there, but I moved mine back one inch just to give me a little bit of flexibility on the spindle and also because that would move around a little bit if I was running 33 or 35 inch tires. So I moved it back one inch, which is no big deal. And then that's what I used to design, you know, where my ball joint would go. I separated the upper and the lower ball joints by 10 and a quarter inches. The reason that I did that is there's some uh, spindles on CarTech that you can buy for a slightly different setup. Um, and they are also 10 and a quarter inch from the upper and the lower ball joints. And that just gives you some flexibility so that as you design this, if you decided you wanted to go away from this and you wanted to go to, let's say more of the CarTech spindle with the two inch hollow axles, because the distance from here to here is 10 and a quarter, just like the CarTech one, it would be a lot easier for you to abandon all this and switch to the CarTech one. So anyways, guys, um, I just wanted to show you the prototype that I have and how basically I came up with it. I'm real happy with this so far. I've, I've been working on this for a couple of months actually. Um, the next video now is going to be me actually building this so that I can see it come to life and I'm going to build it right off of um, the drawings that I made so that I can make sure that those are accurate. Other than that, uh, hopefully I see you in the next video where I'm uh, hopefully welding this together. And thanks for watching the video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.